To find out just how Herschel made his 20-foot telescope, I've come to the Royal Astronomical Society in London where Herschel's observations are kept to meet Professor Alan Chapman, who I'm hoping can point me in the right direction. So I guess the important question, I've got to build this. Have you got any plans or anything that I can actually take with me to help build this thing? Uh, not directly. We don't really have a lot of detailed drawings. In fact, we have the sketches. OK, so I've only got pictures to work from. Yeah. Fabulous. It's not just a matter of making a structure. It has to turn. And it has to go up and down. And to a very limited degree, track. And you let the sky rotate in front of you. So he used the telescope then more for discovery and mapping the sky. He wants to fathom what he calls the length, breadth, depth and profundity of space. And so he built bigger and bigger telescopes to see further out. Precisely. The telescope actually looks quite cumbersome. How did it actually work? There are rollers, so the whole structure could be made to rotate. You would have certainly have needed more than these two elegant gentlemen here. <laughs> you would have needed some big, strong, beefy chaps to do all the heavy pushing and pulling. So I need lots of poles, lots of ropes and chains, some big lads. Big lads? A bit of ingenuity and we can probably crack it. And you could try it. I hadn't quite appreciated how much effort Herschel had gone into to build the thing. And there's an awful lot more stuff that I've got to think about. So for me to build it and for me to get it working safely is going to take quite a bit of planning. I'm also going to need a lot of help. So I've come to the University of Derby who have agreed to house the telescope to meet the crack team who are going to help to make this happen. So hopefully I can see what Herschel saw. Structural engineer Mark Poole is going to lead the design whilst the university staff and the local astronomy society are going to run and manage it after it's built. And they have a few tough questions. It looks as though it's originally in wood. Are yes, you, it was. Are we going to keep it in wood? Or? My worry is if you can have this moon out on a base, yeah. if you want to see a perfect image in the sky, mm. you want the telescope to be still and not distorted. Yeah, yeah. Haven't you got to watch the centre of gravity as well? well that, as, you, as you wind it up, yeah. it's yeah. going to become unstable. How are you going to stop it sagging in the middle? That's it a very good question. Could. Also, how weatherproof is this going to be in terms of high winds? Could there mm. be extra locking devices? Looks like I've got a bit of thinking to do. Now, the engineers have come up with a design that looks a little different to Herschel's original. Instead of wood, we're going to build it out of scaffolding poles revolving around a central pivot. The telescope itself will sit in a cradle to support it, which can be winched up and down. Although it's been updated, it remains true to Herschel's principles. Now I'm against the clock to get this ready, so a solid base for the telescope to stand on is first on my list. We've got to know which way we're pointing the telescope so we can find objects in the sky. For that, we need to plot true north. So the local astronomical society is here to find it the proper way, with an atomic clock and the sun. Yeah, I'm happy with that. At local noon, the shadow thrown by a perpendicular stick will point north. 